55 years ago, an Albany woman was brutally murdered in her own home. Despite an exhaustive investigation, the high-profile case was never solved. In tonight's Cold Case 13 report, Jerry Gretzinger takes us back to 1964 and explains why all these years later, there's now new hope in the murder of Catherine Blackburn. It was a crime that shook the community. 50-year-old Catherine Blackburn of Albany was single, quiet, and a creature of habit. So in September of 1964, when she did not show up to mass one Sunday or work the following Monday, her family went to check on her. A 19-year-old niece named Sandy was the first to discover her Aunt Kate, who had been sexually assaulted, brutally murdered, and mutilated by her attacker. Investigators worked tirelessly, but the case went cold. The Blackburn file was packed away in storage where it would stay for decades. 55 years later, Sergeant Melissa O'Donovan has literally pulled the Blackburn files off the shelf. While out with some retired officers, one recalled the case and Melissa was captivated. She bled out, she was stabbed in the neck, um, left common card artery was the official cause of death, and she did have some post-mortem mutilation after the fact. So, I mean, this is a very shocking crime. O'Donovan shared the file with Detective Lieutenant Al Martin. Both were impressed with the amount of evidence that had been collected and carefully preserved. Uh, bloody pillowcases, um, some clothing, and some weapons believed to have been used in the crime, most notably kitchen knives. Over 800 pages of notes and interviews were compiled, which helps some. See, the challenge that we're having now is that this case is as old as it is. Um, a lot of the detectives who investigated this case and a lot of the people that they had interviewed are no longer with us. Even Catherine's old house is long since demolished. To speak with someone who'd been there would be invaluable. <laughs> While out for a walk, O'Donovan's dog Rosie caught the eye of a 75-year-old woman who lives down the street. The woman introduced herself, Sandy Carmichael. Catherine Blackburn's niece, who discovered her aunt's body 55 years ago. That was the day that our hearts got ripped out. Do you want to open up your photos? Hmm. Still wanting justice for her aunt, Sandy immediately agreed to help O'Donovan and Martin and revisit one of her darkest memories. Here's what they pieced together. Catherine Blackburn owned the home at 117 Colony Street. She lived on the first floor and had placed ads in local papers seeking an upstairs tenant. On the evening of Saturday, September 12, 1964, Catherine was seen sweeping her front steps. A short time later, someone arrived at her home, claiming to be interested in the rental. She let the man in, led him upstairs. While showing in one of the bedrooms, Catherine was struck in the back of the head with a hammer. She was stabbed in the neck, sexually assaulted. Parts of her body were mutilated after death. The original crime scene diagram shows the killer dragged Catherine's body out of the bedroom and left her by the stairs. Some evil walked into her house that day, okay, under the pretense of renting this apartment and took her life. On Monday morning, September 14th, Sandy answered the call from friends, worried that Catherine hadn't shown up for work. She and another aunt went to Catherine's house to check on her. No answer at the door, so Sandy threw some small stones at the bedroom window. So she went around back and got in through the cellar door. At the top of the stairs, she found Catherine. You know, there's a saying that time heals all wounds. Not this one. Not this one at all, because there was no justice. Not yet. O'Donovan and Martin have submitted the evidence to the state crime lab, hopeful 55 years of advances in technology will yield big results. They've been able to pull hairs off an old sheet and have already lifted one new print. The investigators that day located a piece of paper down the block while they were at the original scene, and it just simply says 117 on it. Did the killer write the number down to remember Catherine's address, 117 Colony Street, and then discard it? Is it his print they've lifted? Perhaps, but it's another piece of paper they're most interested in. 
Catherine had kept a book of rent receipts. The last one was torn out. But beneath it was the impression of a man's name, Robert Broadhead. That was sent to the FBI in 1965 for their handwriting analysis. They put a lot of time and energy into it, and they developed a name from that receipt. That person has never been positively identified and or interviewed in this case. Was it the killer's name? Probably not, but it may have been an alias he'd used before. Investigators are well aware Catherine's killer could be dead now, perhaps even buried alongside her here somewhere at St. Agnes Cemetery. But they believe there's a strong chance whoever killed her had other victims, perhaps in other cities or even states. O'Donovan and Martin say they'll take him, dead or alive, to finally close the case. Because that's our responsibility to the family and to Catherine Blackburn. She wants this resolved just as badly as we do. And you think she had a hand in you meeting Oh, Melissa? there's no question in my mind about that. Absolutely. You know, we just have this hope that somebody can help us. With Cold Case 13, I'm Jerry Gretzinger. Mm. And don't forget to check out the case file we've created at WNYT.com. You can review tonight's story and find contact information for police if you have anything to share with them. Jerry was also able to get the original crime scene report, and that's also online for you to look at. Amazing. Fascinating case. Yeah.